Hello everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. I've been receiving a lot of questions about fertilizing in the winter. That is such a good topic for winter because you really have to think about what you're doing in the winter when you're fertilizing. It's so much easier in the spring and summer to get into that regular routine because they're in active growth. But in the winter time, the active growth slows down. And if you're growing them in a home environment, they're going to go dormant. So we're going to go through my collection today and I'm going to show you specifics about how I choose which ones need fertilizer and about how much I give um, each orchid. I thought that would give you a good visual as to what I do with my orchids in the winter as far as fertilizing is concerned. Okay, so let's start with my beautiful Dendrobium Burana Jade Fantasy number nine. She has been in bloom for quite a while now. And she also has two brand new spikes that are now setting buds. So what I do is I don't fertilize while they are setting the buds. This is a sensitive time in the plant and it's already gotten all the energy that it needs to be able to bloom with these two spikes. So what I've always likened this to is um, when a lady is about to give birth to a baby, she doesn't want to eat anything. So I leave these alone until they're bloomed out. Okay, so let's look at this Phalaenopsis. Um, this was my water culture tester fowl. And as you see, it's got a wonderful spike of buds. I'm not going to be fertilizing this one. This one is in bud. Uh, the leaves and the roots are not growing much at this time. So when they're not growing a lot with the leaves or the roots, um, then they're not going to be absorbing as much fertilizer or water. So just keep that in mind. They do go through kind of a dormancy period when you have them in your house in the winter. Um, the temperatures are not as high as they are throughout the rest of the year. Plus the days get so much darker and so the growth is going to slow. So keep that in mind when you're working on your fertilizing schedule. And here's my beautiful Vanda Picara Blue Delight, and I can tell that the blooms are starting to fade a little bit. Not to worry, it's going to spike again soon. And it has a new leaf that's coming out on it, that you see. Vandas grow all year long. Now, in the winter, they might slow down some, but they are still growing. I still do have some active root tips on this one. So what I do with my Vandas in the winter is I divide the amount of fertilizer I normally use on them in about half. So with these, I'm going to give them a quarter teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of my 2014-13 fertilizer each time that I water them. They get a good 24-hour soak every five days, and I fertilize them after every soak. These are heavy feeders, and for them to grow like they are intended to grow, these are intended to grow pretty fast, um, then I do keep up the fertilizing schedule even through the winter. And here's my beautiful Fowl Golden number 5, and she is coming out of bloom. As you see, I've already got this bloom that is starting to fade a little bit. Um, I do have some active root growth um, with this fowl. This fowl, the roots just like to grow. Um, it has an extensive, extensive root system. So I am actually fertilizing this one twice a month with an eighth of a teaspoon of 2014-13 fertilizer. That's at about 100 to 150 parts per million. Um, because the root growth has already started. I can tell the roots are starting to grow now that this is out of bloom. So when you're really looking at your plants to see what's in growth, if you're seeing root growth or leaf growth, that's when you're going to up your fertilizer. 
and that's what usually slows down in the in the winter and here's my beautiful foul legato it still has these two buds that have not bloomed out I believe I need to put this in a sunnier window maybe an eastern facing window to get these buds uh, to bloom out but I will not be fertilizing at this point this is in bud and I don't want to do anything to disturb these buds um, all the spikes that you see on my fowls, all of these have already set buds. Do you see the one over here in this corner? Lots of buds on this one. So I'm not going to be fertilizing these until they're fully bloomed out. And here are my miniatures. And as you see, I've got buds on all of these plants. And I can tell that the root growth has slowed down considerably from the summer and the fall. So active growth, just look at your orchid and say, okay, are you in active growth? Are your leaves growing? Are your roots growing? What's going on that I need to uh, fertilize? If there's, if the growth has slowed, then you need to pull way back on your fertilizer. And here's my beautiful Vanda Cheyenne. Uh, this is the one that I got for Mother's Day that has just the most beautiful foliage and an extensive root system. Uh, the roots are still growing, but not as much as they were in the fall. So I've cut these back. I've cut my, um, my Vanda's back to about a half a teaspoon um, in a gallon of water of 2014 13. Um, they don't need as much as they did in the spring but they still are growing this one has a new leaf as you see and so does this one as you see so when you're seeing active growth that's when you know they still need fertilizer um, when i say that i only do that on sunny warmer days I don't do that on days like today when it's rainy and it's going to get cold tonight. Um, when it's cold outside and they're in a cooler temperature inside your house, the nitrogen won't break down and it just won't be absorbed by the plant and you can get some damage on your plant. You can get some burnt root tips. Okay, I found a fowl that does need fertilizer. As soon as I have a warmer sunny day, I have a new spike on this purple fowl. So yes, this one does need more fertilizer. So the next sunny day, I'm going to get out my fertilizer and I'm going to give her that eighth of a teaspoon of 2014-13. That's about, again, it's about 100 to 150 parts per million because this spike needs that fertilizer so that it will grow Okay, and how about my dendrobiums? The ones in bark, I'm giving a small amount, about the same as I do with the fowls, about twice a month. Um, this one just started spiking. I would show you, but the spike is, it just started. This one, I have a feeling it's gonna be spiking soon. So I'm gonna be fertilizing these at a very low dose, about twice a month. This one right here, I don't see any signs of a spike. Uh, the interesting thing is, is the one that I showed you that is blooming so beautifully was doing exactly this last winter. It was just kind of sitting there. So I have a feeling <laughs> that when it starts blooming, it's going to just bloom prolifically. Okay, now I have active growth here. This new cane just started about, what, four to six weeks ago? So I'm choosing some sunny days and I'm giving it a small dose of fertilizer as well because I've got active growth there. Um, if I don't fertilize that at this point, it might not grow or it won't grow as well as what I want it to. So that is definitely active growth there. And here is my beautiful dendrobium. I absolutely love this bloom. Um, I am 
fertilizing this one low dose because I'm getting another spike of this gorgeous, gorgeous orchid. I just cannot wait until I have another spike of these beautiful blooms. Um, this was worth the wait to get this one to bloom. I'm so happy with these beautiful dendrobiums. And here's my beautiful April's Hope miniature dendrobium. She has been bloomed out now for a few months, so I have started um, just giving her a low dose of fertilizer a few times a month. There is no active growth, but I want to maintain the plant. But in the springtime, when I start seeing new roots, new leaves, new canes, this one will start getting more fertilizer as well. So I hope that that answers your all's questions about fertilizing in the cold winter months and just be highly favored, deeply loved, and greatly blessed. And we'll talk to you all next time.